Welcome everyone. Uh, today I'm going to do a pick a card reading. Um, I just got done, well yesterday I did a Twin Flame reading which I just thought was quite beautiful. Um, so this is going to be a little bit of a continuation of that. Though I'm really looking for like soulmate energy. Uh, let's just call it a love a love reading, um, you know, whatever it may be, you know, soulmate, um, twin flame, whatever it may be, let's just say love. Anyway, so we're going to have three different, you know, we call them pals, but really they're going to be three separate readings. Um, and then we will clarify with the Gilda Tarot. So let me just tell you what cards I'm using for each reading. I am using, we'll, we'll show this pal. I'm using Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. I am using the Psychic Tarot. I'm using the Tarot of Dreams. I am using the Universal Tarot. I'm just wondering, do I have more than six? Um, the Light Seer's Tarot. I am going to use the Major Arcanas that I've been using all through September. So I figured let's add them in. And then I'm also going to use the Tredivia Tarot. So, this is going to be how one, or reading one, reading two, reading three. Now, sometimes in these type of readings, one reading may, you know, you may, you may, what's the word I want to use? Uh, you may resonate with more than just one, um, one reading or one pal. So, what I'd like you to do is just take a moment before we open this up and just calm your mind, close your eyes, just ask your spirit guides to give you a number, one, two, or three, uno, dos, tres, and then go from there. Again, don't feel bad if like, you know, if, if two numbers come to your mind, that just means, you know, I feel like by the time we're done with these, that they all make a whole reading. So, Again, just calm your mind. Definitely ask your guides uh, because I do read through my spirit guides. And just what number comes to mind? What number comes to mind? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and begin. I'm going to bring these over here. Um, so we're going to bring two and three up here. And we're going to start with number one. So, Mother Mary. Actually, let me bring the lid down. There we go. Mother Mary, oh my. Um, by the way, uh, I pre-shuffled all the decks. I didn't look at any of the cards that, you know, I just let them come out. Um, you know, I felt like they were, the cards that were meant to come out came out. They all, they all came out face down, so I have no clue what's in the readings. And um, I used to shuffle online, but it just takes too long. So hopefully you all trust me by now. But anyways, hello marriage. Interesting. I make a commitment to a healthy relationship with God, myself, and my partner. Marriage. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to put that up there. Actually, let me slide these over. I want these in the, I want marriage in the middle. And let's go ahead and begin. Okay, movement, choices, decisions. Movement, choices, and decisions. You know, when I see this image, I often think of like past lives. Um, because I see these wedding rings, these wedding, these wedding bands that look like they're trying to pop through this new door. Now, it could signify this lifetime for sure. Well, it does signify this lifetime. But for some of you, this could talk about someone um, because we are doing soulmates slash twin flames. So you probably have loved before in a previous life. You're definitely soul connected. Uh, but anyways, movement, choices, and decisions. All right. We have justice. Hmm. Part of Libra. Justice um, can certainly talk about cutting ties. Some of you, it may be something you're reflecting upon right now. Do I make this movement? Do I move forward? 
do I stay in a current relationship? You know, I'm posing it as a question because I feel like the two is is a question. Um, it can certainly talk about divorce, you know, and by the way, I would never, I, I never suggest that. You would already feel that if that's the case. But really, justice is about making you whole again. So something may have you feeling unbalanced. And sometimes the simple act, I say simple, but the act, let's say, of cutting ties brings balance back into your life again. Can also talk about a karmic relationship. Maybe some of you are having that realization, like I've given someone a lot of time and maybe it just wasn't working out the way you thought. Now, if it was a karmic relationship, there is something you've learned from that or you have the ability to learn. All right. Um, by the way, so that, this one was the Psychic Tarot. And then the Tarot of Dreams. Now we're going to use the Universal Tarot. The Four of Pentacles. Boy, I just feel like who's ever in this reading, I feel like you, you are trying to make a decision of, I kind of feel like ending something. The Four of Pentacles to me can certainly represent like the homestead. Um... And because it is a love reading, it can, you know, sometimes it can talk about restrictive type energy where either I or someone else, like, you know, um, holds on to their ideas, you know, like, am I open to the flow of the universe or does something have to be my way? Now, I could see this if, like, I want to cut ties. Someone may be like in my way or the highway type energy. Well, let's keep going. We have the Queen of Wands. Queen of Wands can be Sagittarius, Aquarius, Leo. But those who follow me know that, you know, I give you the signs and then I just forget about the signs. So if we just look at her image, it's like she's rising above something. And it looks like she's looking at the past. Like when I put this down on the table, she's literally looking at the past. So it feels like, again, I'm rising above some, something or someone, maybe someone's drama. Um, and also the Queen of Wands is someone who moves according to her, her desires, male or female, by the way. Um, you know, what am I passionate about? You know, what, how do I want my life to look? This, this is someone who is action oriented and doesn't allow fear to really play a role in her decision making. All right. So for the major arcana, look at this temperance, temperance. Well, temperance's first message is patience. And then it's divine timing. I find it interesting where when you look at temperance, like she is making sure, and we are doing soulmate energy. So it's like she is making sure that both these soulmates, that their cups are equally filled. Interesting coming under justice. One of these cups probably was not full, you know, was unbalanced. So all in divine timing. You know what else I love about temperance? You can kind of let go of control. You know, put it in divine's hands. And another way of saying that is what's meant to find me and what I'm meant to find, I will find in divine timing. Especially if justice is representing cutting ties to something. Now, it can be a person, but it can also be something energetic. You know, like the way I've been thinking or what have you. But I love that you have divine in this reading. And then we have, well, look at this, the world. So this is a new chapter. Interesting that it opens up with the two. It's you deciding, am I going to make a movement? What choices? And then making that is like making that final decision. I feel like you are making that decision. Otherwise, I don't feel like the world would show up. 
So, and I also feel like the world talks about, you know, your spirituality. It's interesting. All of a sudden I'm picking up where I may have been dealing with someone um, who really has no interest in their own spirituality. You know, it's like more like living on this earthly plane and not even thinking about, you know, their whole spiritual team or that they're even a spiritual being. I feel like some of you are really evolving. And I feel like when we evolve, those who don't evolve with us, I feel like the universe kind of wants them to fade away. The humanness of us sometimes tries to pull them back in. But it definitely feeling like justice is saying that certain ties, especially if I'm dealing with someone who, you know, again, it's like my way or the highway, because I am reading the four of pentacles as like restrictive energy. It's almost like this person's hanging on to their pentacle and like, I'm not going to share it. It's mine, right? It's me. It's all about me. Someone could certainly be ungrounded. I don't feel like it's you. So, the world. The most spiritual time in your life. Some of you are definitely evolving spiritually. And, you know, when it's like having a spiritual awakening. And when that happens, it's very hard to be around lower vibrational people. You know, it just, it's hard. Um, and by the way, the world coming right next to temperance, divine timing. It's like temperance is saying, you know, you do your part. Like understand the energy that is not making you happy. That maybe is holding you back. You know, someone is saying like, it's my way or the highway. Live life according to my terms. There's no way the queen here would accept that. You know, maybe for a time being, but I feel like this queen is now being inspired to make a move. And temperance is maybe waiting to just, you know, waiting on this queen to see if she actually does it or not. And sometimes because it's a two, it just may mean to simply step into something. I don't need to know exactly where it's going, but the world is... I don't know, feels like, hmm, like I really don't have much to worry about here. It doesn't mean my life will be perfect, but I have a feeling someone is on the other side of this world. Someone is on the other side of this chapter. Interesting, you also got the marriage card. Some of you, it may be the ending of a marriage, but again, this is you making that decision. And it may be opening up, well, maybe someone else that you eventually will marry. All right. So let's go ahead and take the Gilded Tarot. I'm going to give him a couple shuffles. Um, you know, you have three major arcanas out of six cards. So it does feel like in this energy, there's going to be change. But I feel like it, it, like I feel like the court is in your or the ball is in your court. Give him a cut. All right. So we're just going to kind of go right over the reading. That didn't take long. Well, Seven of Cups, there you are, trying to make that decision. You know, the Seven of Cups can certainly stand, um, it can, like, the energy can feel chaotic in the Seven of Cups. You know, I have a feeling also it's represent, and real quick, it is a number seven, and a seven to me is a very spiritual number. But I feel like it's about our spirituality growing. I feel like someone is unsatisfied with a cup that they're in now. And thinking, wondering, can it be better? You know, is there more out there for me? 
Mm, nine of Swords. Interesting because the Nine of Swords and the Queen of Wands don't really fit together. But it's also a nine, so it can talk about like a chapter. But this is about a lot of worry. So some of you may have like a lot of worry about making a final decision about something. But let me tell you, the Nine of Swords really speaks about unnecessary worry and temperance being right there. It's like, you know, hand that worry over to me. Don't try to control the things that you just cannot control. And then we have the Seven of Wands. So I feel like it's interesting because you got two sevens mirroring each other. Seven of Wands is really the energy of standing one's ground. You know, sometimes it can be the energy of like putting out other people's fires. Like I put out one fire and then boom, another fire begins. I put out that fire and boom, another one. And that gets old, right? And yes, it can talk about standing your ground also. But because it's coming over the world and that Four of Pentacles, where I feel the Four of Pentacles again, feels like something that's restrictive in your life. Yet, at the same time, like, you know, what lies on the other side of this new chapter? Well, temperance, number one. So... Everything happening in divine timing. It's, it, and, and I feel like that gives you the opportunity just to breathe and to trust. Trust in divine timing. Be willing to take movement, you know, towards your own desires, your own passions. Knowing that sometimes, you know, standing your ground is important. But other times I got to just ask myself, like, is, it, is this fight worth it? This can be ego type energy, but I feel like it's the other one. You know, I might be fighting off someone who just has a big ego. And I just might be tired of that. All right. I don't want to leave it with that type of energy. So let's just look a little closer. Huh. Eight of Swords. Okay. Self-created prison. You know, the Eight of Swords is... It's where we put up walls. It is energy where we're trying to protect ourselves, right? But Eight is also about a new beginning. And it is a number of infinity. Sometimes we have to realize that we are more than just this human being. We're also a spiritual being. That means there's nothing we can't handle. So I get it where we put up these walls and we've all done it, right? But I feel like because the world is showing and temperance, this is more about trusting in divine timing. Also trusting within your own intuition. Like if you're ready for a new beginning, you got to allow yourself to have that new beginning and not let fear rule the day because there's a lot of fear you know, it's interesting because there is a lot of fear in this in this reading, but there's also a lot of spiritual energy. And again, this queen, I feel like is representing, you know, it's almost like answering a question like, is it okay to follow my passions, my desires, even though I may be connected to someone else? You know, you have to answer that question, but I feel like, yes, this person does have a blindfold on and it will serve them to take that blindfold off. You know, it just means being honest with oneself. If I keep putting out someone's fire and they're not willing to make any type of change, is it worth me to continue to stand my ground? And I feel like it's got you in this, like, what do I do? What do I do type of energy? And it has you creating this prison. You know, the only person who can free you from this energy is you. You can free yourself. Whatever that may mean to you. 
you know, but I do feel like when this prison is uncreated, it's freedom, baby. It's freedom. Okay, well, I'm not going to leave it on that either. But I do feel like, um, I do feel like, like your spiritual team is trying to show you where fear could potentially be holding you in place. Where I feel like, like on a heart's level, it, it, you know, like, how do I say this? Like, I feel that, like, if I could just do the things that feel right to me, then I would do them. But something is holding you back. Someone is holding you back. Well, I mean, you are holding yourself back. Well, we have to be honest. And again, temperance is saying this worry, right? These walls, this uncertainty, put it in my hands and instead just trust in divine timing. And then you have the magician. First of all, look at the infinity. It's like, you know, very clear. As above, so below. No beginning, no end. Again, we're talking about soulmate energy. Or twin flame. And the reason why I keep saying that is because I just did a twin flame reading. And um, I don't know, I just felt it was kind of beautiful. Difficult, but then beautiful. So anyways, the manifester, trusting within yourself. And it is following over the world's energy. Can I create a new life for myself? You know, if this is talking about the ending of a relationship, will I find love again? I feel like absolutely. And it may just be the one. I don't know why, but I want to take one more. Look at that, the sun. The sun will come out tomorrow. You know, first of all, the sun speaks about um, a brand new day. The sun's the illuminator. You know, it's illuminating to you your own truth. You can't hide when the sun is out. Also, it is really beautiful energy of just trusting like in this next journey that is opening up because that is what the world is speaking about. That, you know, it, it, the sun to me is is a reminder of anything that's done in the dark will come to the light. So let's just say I'm afraid of moving forward because I'm not sure what lies out there. Well, first of all, the sun. Hello. That's a beautiful energy. Um, and I feel like the sun is here also to help you see and trust your own truth. You know, I feel like I've been stuck within this Mm. within this lower vibrational energy, but I feel like it's because of someone else. It's because someone else is more than comfortable living in that type of energy. And with the restriction, I feel that four pentacles, I just don't feel like there's going to be change there. If anything, I feel like it's going to be like fighting, the continuation of fighting. Do I want that? Of course, I mean, again, the ball is put in your court. It has to be your decision. But I love that temperance is here to help you. Take all that worry and let me deal with it. Just take a step forward. Sun, brand new day. Interesting. The magician, and then the sun. That should even give you more clarity on, you know, if I'm following my passions, my desires as the queen of wands, 
Again, I'm not thinking about the sign, but this is someone who is rising above the drama, or we're seeing the drama. Justice feels like, am I going to cut those ties? And I feel like the only thing that stops me is the fear of what tomorrow may bring. But because I feel like you have evolved so much, it's really unnecessary fear. And that's what the Nine of Swords speaks about. You know, just trust that the sun will come out tomorrow. That this world chapter, right, the next chapter. And I feel like in the world's energy, again, the most spiritual time in my life, I have evolved. But listen, this Eight of Swords is really important to look at, right? Because I, what I've done is created, you know, this self-created prison. And I feel like it just simply means that I stop believing. I, you know, I just stop believing. But yet I see these eights and I see the infinity within the magician. So the ability to create the life that I truly want. I feel like there's love that lies on the other side of that door. I feel like I just want to take one more. Queen of Swords. Queen of Swords. You know, this is someone I feel like who it's important to this queen that those who surround her live in their truth, right? Honesty. But I've also got to be honest with myself. You know, I've got to be what it is I want to bring in. I got to be able to match that. That's what the law of attraction is about. So. Some of you, this could be talking about like the regaining of your voice. You know, your own truth. And telling yourself you have a right to live the type of life that you see fit. I, I find it interesting your sword is touching the light. And then we have the sun right here. Now, Queen of Wands can be Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. But I feel like it's more because this Queen of Swords is mirroring the Eight of Swords. So it's like this Queen of Swords is going to use that sword, cut those ties. And I feel like that brings down those walls. It's like someone is definitely evolving and understand, you know, understanding that I just deserve more. I deserve to live like a life of my passions, my desires. But I just have to step forward. I gotta put my toes in the water. And the ability to manifest, especially with the sun, that's kind of beautiful. And it's over the world. So I feel like there's nothing to fear but fear itself here. Okay, well, let's pick these up. And let's go ahead and move into reading number two. Let me just grab a drink real quick. And I'll give you a second just to think. Open your mind, open your heart. All right, let's begin. Hello, patience. So this is like temperance's energy. I trust in divine timing. Interesting because I guess this is a unicorn. It's like sitting patiently, right? Easily could stand up and jump right over that fence. But instead is trusting in divine timing. Patience first. We'll see why. All right. Well, Nine of Cups. So, the Nine of Cups. First of all, it's a nine. So, it can certainly speak about a chapter again. You know, and I also feel like nine is about reflection. 
Um, but I'm not meant to stay in this reflection forever. This is about finding inner harmony within oneself. But clearly, as it says right in the card, it's about a fulfillment of a wish. Some of you may have been single for a while. And if that's the case, don't think it's been wasted time. Because I feel like in the Nine of Cups, what I really found within that energy, however long it took me, is that inner harmony. And then a fulfillment of a wish. So some of you may be saying to divine, like, is it time? When is my time? Hello, star. There's your wish. You know, interesting fulfillment of wishes. And then here is that wish. That's what the star card is. It's your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. And it's about bringing them into your reality. I often feel in the star card that what we want to remember is we're working hand in hand with divine. So like signs being sent, how can I find these wishes? How can I bring them about? Number one, I may have had to have patience, but I feel like the patience that you've had is what's allowed this inner harmony to come about. And I feel like once you're in the energy of inner harmony, like you've, you find, it doesn't mean again, life is perfect, but you found this inner harmony. It's like you're believing in yourself again. That's the perfect time for these wishes to start manifesting. Also card of Aquarius, by the way. We have the King of Swords looking at him. He looks serious. Uh, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Now, you know, if anything comes in reverse, I didn't change anything. I took them just the way they came out. And I let them come out on their own. So with the King and the Upright, um, I like that. Because, again, we, you know, we saw the Queen in the last reading. Interesting how I said... Sometimes a reading can be like they can connect to each other. We saw that queen is the last card. And now we have the king. But anyways, this is someone who, you know, has integrity. This is someone who I feel like really knows how to communicate. Not someone that would hold their words back. It is connected right next to an Aquarius card. For, so for some of you. You may connect, you may be connected or you may, it may be coming. You know, it's interesting because I remember doing Aquarius' reading for September and it was a difficult reading, but there was a silver lining at the end. Hmm. Hello, Six of Cups. Someone that I used to know. Let's not forget patience from Mother Mary, but it is about divine timing. You know, I feel like it was important, really important, that you find this inner harmony within yourself. Because why? Because I feel like that opens up your heart. That opens up to you're opening yourself up to all types of, of opportunities unexpected uh love some of you this could be someone who especially with the king of swords again a communicator could be someone who reaches out and you may not even expect it this is someone that i would have happy memories about this is someone if i'm thinking about them you know, maybe, well, if I'm single in this nine of cups energy and someone keeps coming to my mind, first of all, I feel like if someone keeps coming to your mind, chances are they're also thinking about you, especially with social media these days, right? We're connecting to, I know on my personal Facebook, like the majority of my friends are people I went to school with, people I knew growing up. Anyways, Six of Cups, under a fulfillment of a wish. The Emperor. The Emperor. First of all, card of Aries. But listen, to me, the Emperor is someone I can definitely look up to. 
I have to say, in this reading, I feel like you may be connecting with someone that um, I feel like time has definitely passed. Again, this could be someone that I knew when I was much younger. It could have been a friend. Doesn't even have to mean I was in a relationship with them. Um, and, you know, I also read past lives. So it doesn't even have to mean that in this lifetime I've known them yet. But I do feel the majority it is someone that you know. So I feel like this is someone who uh, definitely has evolved. The Emperor is definitely someone we can look up to. Coming under the star, by the way. The Emperor is someone who is empathetic, compassionate. Maybe you haven't had that for a while. This can definitely be someone who, um, I feel like they would have their shit together. You know what I mean? Like they could be a business owner or um, even like a spiritual teacher type of energy. He's looking right over at the Six of Cups. And then we have the Eight of Wands, fast moving energy. Not only fast moving energy, but to me, the Eight of Wands speaks about what I think about, I bring about. And it's interesting because that's what I felt here. Like, like all of a sudden I might start thinking about someone and I'm saying all of a sudden, but maybe while you've been single, because I do kind of feel like, you know, it doesn't have to mean you're single, but if you're in a relationship, let's say. I feel like you kind of checked out of that relationship. And if you're single, again, there may be someone that you're reconnecting and it can be through, through social media, but I also feel like they're going to communicate. And I think about it, bring about. That's something we really have to learn. That's the law of attraction, right? I have to think about my own vibration. Where is it? Have I found that inner harmony? Have I given myself that time? And then I feel like you, if you do, if you have found that inner harmony and then a fulfillment of a wish, well, it brings out the six of cups. Again, someone that I used to know. Could be someone who's been... Like, you know, following, let's say following your social media and um, maybe you've made a change on your relationship status. Could have said like I was in a complicated relationship and then I end that and then bam, I put single and someone's like, oh, they're single. Now I'm going to communicate. I feel like I have nothing to worry about with the emperor. And I feel like the emperor is a little bit of a clue. You know, this person has evolved in their life where like in the last reading, I felt like someone was dealing with someone who has no interest in evolving. So you yourself had to do that. Here, I feel like it's already been done. And I feel like this is saying that this person has also evolved. You know, this is someone who does care about the underdog. And they may do that in some way for a living. I feel like this is just some clues. And I feel like, let's say they do reach out and they communicate. Normally, I would say take your time in a relationship, but because we have trust in divine timing, this does talk about something that is divine. To me, that means something that is meant to be. It's all be, it's already been written in the stars, so to speak. It doesn't guarantee us anything because it's our energy that's going to determine whether we're going to allow or not allow. But I have a feeling like if someone reaches out and communicates with you, this energy feels like it is going to go quick. You know, fulfillment of wishes and then boom, right away, there's that wish. 
and that wish is connected to the emperor. All right, let's just go right over this. I feel like patience is about more you finding this inner harmony within yourself. And again, like don't shoot for perfection. We want to remember that we were born imperfect and it really is the adventure of the soul. Like the soul came here to have different adventures. Knight of Wands, passion. Again, fast moving energy. So when I tell you to take your time, I feel like in a way, do I even know what I'm talking about? Because this is fast moving energy. This is passionate. Definitely desirable. And right over the Nine of Cups and that Six of Cups. Hello, fool. A new beginning. So the star, the fulfillment of that wish, offers this new beginning. And we do need to talk about the, the fool relating to the past because the fool has learned not to bring the past along with him. Now, of course, this person can be of the past, but really what it's talking about is the lessons of the past, right? All I'm bringing with me is the wisdom that I have gained and I'm allowing myself to have this new beginning. The fool takes a leap of faith and everything here feels like it is about you taking a leap of faith. And I feel like, why not? Why not? Especially with the Knight of Wands, you know, you're going to feel it. Like you're going to feel the passion. This feels romantic. It really does. It feels romantic. And, you know, it reminds me of like Sam and I, when um, we reconnected like 40 years after the fact, we spent many years on the phone, just like talking and communicating. And it was romantic. And we helped each other work out our past, you know, the difficulties that we've been through, all of that. And you know, I feel like all of that was meant to be before I actually made the move to move in with him. So, but I don't feel like you're taking as long as I took here. Letting the past be the past and then taking a leap of faith. And by the way, it's coming over a wish that you had anyway. And sometimes we don't even know we have that wish. Wow. Hello, Knight of Pentacles. Okay, so first of all, you have two knights mirroring each other. One knight is bringing in passion and desire. And this knight, which I often feel is like guardian angel energy, talks about bringing something into your physical world. This means that you are physically coming together. Now, now the Knight of Pentacles also stands for patience, right? I come at the right time. Makes sense with this inner fulfillment being first or let's just say becoming single that feels like the right time and interesting also it speaks of patience right but patience saying you know the knight of pentacles tells you i come in the right time i come at a time when i know that what i bring which is which is the ace of pentacles you know let's just say a seed I know that you're going to, you'll be able to nurture it. You'll be able to give, give it the love and care that it needs so that it can blossom. But because it speaks about patience, but the eight of wands is here, fast moving energy and the knight of wands is also fast moving energy. I feel like, well, this must be, this must be the right time. It may start off as communication and then quickly you may be like, oh, well, how did I not see way back then that you were the one for me? But don't, no judgment. I don't mean it in that way because, you know, let's just say, again, this is someone that you know, you know, each of you then go on and live your individual lives 
And again, as soulmates, because that's what we're doing, soulmates, um, you know, the experiences that you've had, that your souls had, the adventures, the, the hardships, all of that has taught you well, has allowed your soul to evolve. And the same for them. And then you come together. And just like I was saying how, you know, the conversations that Sam and I had on the phone really were helping us to heal each other. That's kind of what I feel here. So. The fool, will you take that leap of faith? It's coming over something you're wishing for anyway. And by the way, I feel like someone else is wishing the same wish. When I wish upon a star. Makes no difference where you are. Now, I just, I just, first of all, that song just came to my head. So that may mean something to someone. But I also want to say that it can certainly represent that you may not even live in the same area. Um, and I don't want to keep talking about Sam and I, but we didn't live in the same state. Now we do. Feels like for some of you, it's like you have this special spirit guide who is really helping to bring about this wish. And by the way, the Nine of Cups says fulfillment of wishes. So my first wish may be that this communication, a line of communication opens up. And then the second wish may be that then we actually come together. And I feel like that's exactly what's happening. And the Emperor, to me, looking over at the Six of Cups, it feels like I have evolved from, you know, like, way back then. I'm saying way back then, you know, it could have been nine years, um, you know, could have been 40 years. That's how long it was for Sam and I. And I don't know why I keep talking about us, but I, I just kind of feel that energy in here. And I feel like for some of you, Again, you may just start thinking about someone and they're thinking about you. And some of you are making these changes or it could be the other way around or it could be both doing the exact same thing where you're changing your status, you know, from relationship to single. And I feel like this king is like, okay, this is the time for me to come in and make some type of communication. And it may be simply a like, hello, how you been? And then that opens up. That opens everything up. Passion, the desire, the communication, and then the physical coming together. The full, it is a new beginning, asking you to take this leap of faith. I have a feeling you needed to trust in divine timing. And the Knight of Pentacles, again, patience, but I come in the right time in a way that gives you um, the understanding of, you know, let's just look back at like past relationships that didn't work out and where I really had to understand that maybe they just weren't meant to work out. Maybe they were only meant to work out for so long. You know, everything has taught you something. But now this feels like divine. Feels like divine is saying, this is the time. Beautiful. And I also want to say, I can see how it can relate to the first reading. Again, that Queen of Swords being the last card. And now we have the King of Swords, like-minded energy. Okay. That was kind of beautiful. We'll let that be. Slide that over on number three. Family. I pray for my family and give this situation over to God for answers, support, 
and healing family. Hello, new beginnings. The full. You know, in a way, I feel like, well, there's your healing. Because I feel like if I'm not healed, and, by, and you know, I'm also feeling there may be some who may come together and it could be like a blended family, like they have kids, I have kids. But again, it's not about bringing the, the baggage of the past with you, just the wisdom. The fool asks you, will you allow yourself to have this new beginning? Will you take that leap of faith? Seven of Pentacles. One of my favorite cards in a love reading, and I'll tell you why. I feel like this is your tree of life. I feel like all those seeds, all those pentacles on the tree are different seeds that your soul has planted. Whether before you came into this lifetime, and I feel like some of them are like like predestined, let's say. And other ones are seeds that I've planted in this lifetime. This is also an energy of patience. And it is to allow a seed to come to, um, you know, again, I relate it to like an apple tree. Like I don't want to pick an apple before it's ripe. But I do feel like this is energy. It's kind of like the wheel to me, like what's destined. The sun, the sun, I feel like you got nothing to fear here. This also feels like, um, you know, it almost feels like the playfulness in you is coming out. Like you're allowing yourself to be playful. I feel like the sun also gives us confirmation that let's say we dealt with someone who had untrustworthy energy. Again, what's ever done in the dark will come to the light. And I don't need to worry about that because the sun is your illuminator. I love the sun mirroring the full because I do feel like it's like I'm just allowing myself to be playful. Enjoy life. See what happens. And the seven of pentacles just feels a little like destiny anyway. We have hmm, three swords under the full. And that may be what the healing part is. Healing of that broken heart. Now, I feel like the three swords, this energy has already happened. So, it may signify that, you know, first of all, I probably do need to reflect upon it. But not get stuck in it. Some of you may, of course, had a broken heart. But because the fool is above it. I feel like I'm not going to allow that to affect my present. And the sun again, if I'm worried at all, is this energy going to be good for me? Is this someone who's going to break my heart? The sun's like, if that would be the case, I will send you red flags. And it'd be very hard to miss the red flags when the sun is out. But. I feel like the Seven of Pentacles is saying, no, my dear, this is about destiny. Well, hello world again. A new chapter. So it's like the fool is saying, I'm going to, I am going to take this leap of faith. And I love that the Seven of Pentacles is above it because the seed that's coming to fruition, that seed that's becoming ripe. It feels like the right time. I often feel the world also speaks of your spirituality, though, because I feel like the world doesn't show until we're ready for it. You know, this is the last card in the tarot. So I feel like it's the closest card, the closest energy to God. And maybe it does speak about your faith, right? Allowing my faith to open up. I'm following my passions, my desires, my morals. You know, whoever in, was in that Three of Swords. 
kind of, I feel the same energy as the first reading where they have no interest in evolving, but somebody else does. And look at this, the Ace of Pentacles. So it's kind of like these readings are connecting because the last card in the second pile was the Knight of Pentacles. And that Knight of Pentacles is about bringing this Ace of Pentacles in. And I love the Ace. And this does mean that something that's coming into your physical world, but it's someone. And I love that the sun is right above it. So this tells me that you are able to nurture this seed. You're able to take this seed and give it the loving, nurturing energy it needs to truly blossom. And it's following the world. So, whoever caused this three swords, and it could be three different people, it could be one person. You know, I could have been in a repeat pattern, but I feel like the fool, you set yourself free from that. You're ready for this new beginning. And I don't even feel like the fool even knows yet what's about to happen. But I'm going to take a leap of faith. Ace of Pentacles. I'm coming into your physical world. I follow the world's energy. The next chapter. You know, this Ace of Pentacles... I can give it, again, the sun and the loving and the nurturing that will guarantee me that it will blossom. Or I can just let it dry up and die. So probably one of the most important energies in this reading is the fool. Is allowing oneself to have a new beginning, even after the fact. All right, let's go ahead and take the Gilded Tarot over it. I mean, I just love how the Ace of Pentacles is following the world. It almost feels like I don't even have to wait that long. You know, it feels like new love. We have the Page of Pentacles. So the Page of Pentacles coming over the Fool and the Three of Pentacles. I do feel like, um, because I feel like the Page of Pentacles is a path of knowledge. It's the things that I'm learning. And I feel like I'm always open to learning more. So I've learned maybe what's caused the Three of Swords. Maybe I've given my energy away to what I'd hoped. Of course we want, you know, and listen, I feel like I was just watching something and it was saying that we fall in love three times, like true love, three times in our life. This may be the last one, right? The one that I do make that commitment to. Hello, Ace of Swords. Communication. You know, the Ace of Swords is my yes card. Coming over the uh, Seven of Pentacles, which I read very much like the wheel, what's destined, and then the world. So maybe someone reaches out and communicates. Maybe you reach out and communicate. I also read this as truth. Like, I really have nothing to fear here. We have the devil. Card of Capricorn. Interesting. So, you know, right now, if this is not a Capricorn for you, um, and listen, by the way, the devil can speak about temptations. But the sun is right there. So, let's say that the that someone who's broken my heart wants to reach out again or does reach out again. It'd be very easy now, especially if I've jumped into the fool's energy, be very easy for me now to recognize someone's energy. 
It's probably something you've learned. So if this is energy that, you know, does speak about temptation, and if it's not a Capricorn for you, then I feel like, you know, the sun is, is helping to comfort you that you don't have to worry about that. And then we have, well, look at this, Seven of Pentacles again. Interesting. Interesting because that makes complete sense. You know, if this is talking about two people that are coming together that, you know, are soulmates, well, each of these soulmates would have planted that seed probably before they came into this lifetime. It's almost like two soulmates saying to each other, let's make a plan to come into each other's lives at a certain time. And I do feel like often that when we start to do better, when we start to have, you know, when we find our own power, sometimes there can be people who tend to come back. It's almost like that final lesson, because it is mirroring that page of Pentacles where I am learning lessons. So it could be two people, right? It feels like someone who's just meant to be. And I love that the Ace of Swords is really coming between or connecting these two Seven of Pentacles. Like these soulmates already had this, it's like predestined. But I also wouldn't be surprised if someone who broke your heart at the same time, you know, it's like as soon as I start to become happy, they want to come in and try to ruin it. But now because you've evolved so much, and the sun is like, I'm going to reveal that to you. I feel like that'd be a very easy no. Let's just take a couple more, though. Look at that, the tower, but in reverse. Well, there's your no. You know, to me, it's like if someone is making a repeat appearance and listen, maybe it's someone who's broken my heart three times and I finally been able to let that go. Right. I'm able now to allow myself to have these a new beginning and the sun mirroring that it's meant to be a happy time for you, a playful time for you and two souls who who I feel like planted this seed. Let's come together at this time in our life. Well, over the world, it speaks about one's spirituality. What am I holding? The tower. So that's interesting because I feel like at the same time, if someone is coming back who has broken my heart, and, you know, Sometimes people can break your heart and evolve and be much better. But I don't feel that here. I just feel like this is someone who may be like, wait a minute, she's becoming happy. He's becoming happy. I don't like that. So they come in and they try to steal that happiness from you. No way are you giving it. No way. And I feel like this is a sense of comfort. You know, if I did deal with that Three of Swords, which who hasn't? This is saying, this is not something that, you know, has a tower connected to it. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. Okay, but I feel like I don't want to leave it there. So let's just do one more round. The Death Card. Makes sense. Death card. First of all, it's card Scorpio. But it's a closing of a door. And it is a real closing of the door. It's over. 
And I feel like you're speaking, if someone again is making a repeat appearance, just when you are starting to feel free and happy and playful again. You're like, no, my dear, that door has been closed. You know, the death card speaks about a closing of a door so that there can be a rebirth in your life. And the fool is going to take that leap of faith. And it's following this tower that's in reverse. So I feel like the power of the tower is no more. We don't have to worry about that. Why? Because of my own energy. Because I myself have evolved. I know that because of the world. It speaks about your spirituality. You know, it feels like these soulmates, again, feel like they're written in the stars, meant to be. And this person is coming in the light. Where the person in the Three of Swords is darker energy. Some of you may have like got caught up with a narcissist type energy. And they definitely, you know, it's like they don't want to give you happiness, but they don't want to see you happy. And that's about reclaiming your own power. And it feels like that's exactly what you've done. I also wouldn't be surprised if um, who you're connecting with Again, you could have you could have kids, they could have kids, but I feel like all will like just beautifully come together. You reclaimed your power, you shut that door to the past, and that death card is talking about the three of swords. And anyone who tries to come in that is not of a high vibration, you just don't belong in my life. I know that now. I feel like these soulmates, the one who is meant to be in your life, it's coming through the Ace of Swords. So communication, truth, honesty, integrity. And the sun, your illuminator. You know, the sun illuminates all the good, the bad, the ugly. And it's so that we can feel comfortable. This feels like very playful type energy again. But these souls, these soul maids, this feels like the right time. And the death card makes so much sense, right? That closing of the door, locking it. No way I'm going to reopen that door. And I am going to allow myself to have a rebirth. That's what the death card asks. Well, that's really what the death card promises. When you close past doors, new door, a new door will always open. But this all feels like in divine timing. Like just when it was meant to be. Beautiful. And I just want to say, I can see how all three of these readings are speaking to each other. And I feel that often when I do pick a card. Whoa, I don't know what that noise was. It just made me jump. Um, but I do, I can feel how they do relate to each other. So again, like, you know, if you relate to more than one, and even watching them in the way that they came out, you know, it's like the evolution of you and the evolution of someone else. I feel like one of the most important things we have to learn in life is when to close these doors. And knowing and trusting when we do close these doors, that new opportunities, new people, new love will show. Especially if we're in the right energy, again, the full Allowing this new beginning, the willingness to take a leap of faith. And in this reading, I feel like it's going to be very clear when these two people come together that it was just meant to be. That it is divine timing. Wow. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there.
um, you know, this, I say this all the time, but this really is one of my favorite readings to do. And I think the next reading I'm going to do is a past life reading. I like to do readings in certain orders um, because I like, especially as it relates to love, because I want you to be able to see it from all the different angles. Like, what did I learn from a past life that now has come into this lifetime? Um, and what does it all mean? So, yeah, that will be the next reading I do. But I loved it. And um, I hope you did too. And again, you know, just trust within your spiritual team that whatever, whichever reading you chose, even if you felt like all of them relate, just trust in that. Just trust in that. All right, guys, I'm going to let that be. I love you. I thank you. Um, you know, I thank you for sharing my videos also. That helps this channel so much, truly. Uh, especially with pick a card readings, because they're not my most popular reading. I don't know why. I feel like you're getting three readings in one. But, you know, whatever the reason, um, I thank you so much for sharing them. I thank you for your comments. Your comments, not only do they help give me confirmation, you know, and as I say this, like, I trust what I see. I trust what I say. But I also love the confirmation. But I also feel like your words, your experiences help those who may still be stuck. You help to help free them. And I feel like that's beautiful. And I feel like that's part of a lot of people say, what's my purpose in, in life? Your purpose is really just to help others. That's it. You know, I don't feel like God says, like, did you become an attorney? Did you become, you know, what did you do? Well, I helped a lot of people. I helped those that I could. And that, I feel like, is your purpose. So, I'm going to stop talking now. I love you guys. Um, I thank you. And I will see you next time at our table. Keep your eye open if you're interested in a past life reading because I feel like I'm going to do it um, probably today. Yeah, I'll probably do it today. So anyways, love you. Thank you. And I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.